sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to the King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is praise Him. Hallelujah is praise God. Hallelujah is praise Yahuwah. Uh, some people say Yahweh. Some people say Jehovah. But the way I read it in the Hebrew language, a Yehovah, very powerful name. Huh? Lots of breathing out. Yehovah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise. Hallelujah. Praise him whose name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Whose name is Jesus. Praise him. Well, we don't want you to be hearers only. We want you to be doers. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him, sun, moon, stars. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him, all ye creatures. Praise him. Praise him, everything that hath breath. Praise him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him. Ah, praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him in the atmosphere of his power. Praise him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise. Praise him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him, sun, moon, stars. Praise him. Praise him, all ye that hath breath. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. <laughs> Praise him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. Sing to the Lord a new song. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him from the heavens. Praise him from the heights. <laughs> Praise him, all ye angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Hallelujah. Praise him, heavens of heavens. Praise him, sun, moon, and stars. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, all the earth. Praise Him, all ye deeps. Hallelujah. Every unique creature, praise Him. Hallelujah. Fire and hell and snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling His word, mountains and hills and fruitful trees and all ye cedars. Beast and all ye cattle, every creeping thing and flying fowl, praise him. Kings of the earth, all ye people, all ye princes, all ye prime ministers, all ye presidents, all ye judges, all ye supreme courts, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Both young men. And maidens, old men and children, praise him, praise ye the Lord, praise him, praise him, <laughs> oh, praise him then, praise his holy name, praise the name of the Lord, praise. 
praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him for his excellent glory. And praise him for his excellent mercy. Oh, praise him, all ye heavens and ye earth. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Woohoo. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Southern California, in certain surf breaks, when you see a huge set come in, you go, Oi! 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 So it's a, 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 a shout out. It says, Pedal way out. A big wave is coming. Hallelujah. Oh, praise Him! Oi! Praise Him! Oi! Praise Him! Oh, ye earth, all ye heavens, everything that has breath, praise Him for the wonder which He has done. Praise Him for the glory of the heavens that He is. Praise Him, praise Him, Mamalakebo. Praise Him, oh praise Ye the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Now religion will teach you to try to worship God with a sad countenance and a stoic disposition. But such things have nothing to do with the description of what we see in heaven. For you enter his gates with praise. Enter his courts with thanksgiving. You come in boldly with joy unspeakable and full of glory, joy and rejoicing in the ancient of days. There's two classes of people before the throne, those that are scared to death out of their mind and those who have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Two different classes of folks. Hallelujah. We understand when people don't know what we're talking about, but we set our hearts to making sure that everybody understands before the meeting is over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now, you know, you can really get to shouting with joy if you've had depression in your life, if you had some kind of mental illness, some kind of uh, in disability, disabling disease, and you get healed. Hallelujah. I said for you go run around the place. Huh? Hallelujah. Well, see, my goodness, I just celebrate this all the time because the more you walk with him, the more you get to see him. Hallelujah. The more you obey, the more you get to see. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can be seated. My daughter was singing, Deep Calls Unto Deep. Deep Calls Unto Deep. See, people want to try to interact with God based on a superficial realm. They want to try to interact with God on a, just a very surface kind of a way. But God wants the depths of your heart to be moved. God wants passion in your life. Hallelujah. He does. We, that's why we get radical. We go, and here we are to worship you, Lord. Here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that you're our God. You're altogether lovely, altogether holy. Altogether wonderful to me. On here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. 
You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Lord Jesus Christ, my Redeemer, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, my Savior. Lord Jesus Christ, my Redeemer. Lord Jesus Christ, my God and King. Hallelujah. When Jesus was in the womb of Mary, praise rose up from her lips. And she said, she couldn't hold it back <laughs> when she saw her cousin Elizabeth. She said, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoiceth in God my Savior. He that is mighty hath done. done great things to me. Well, he's not in our womb, but he's in our heart. So that praise can arise from our lips all day long and say the same thing. My spirit doth magnify the Lord, and my soul doth rejoice in God my Savior. He that is mighty hath done great things to me. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, you are my God. Oh, Lord, you are my Lord. And with boldness I now come. And to the holiest of all, by the blood of Jesus, I now come to you. By the blood of Jesus, oh, I stand here boldly before your throne. Tonight we want to give you an opportunity to really step into the holies of holies. We don't want you to pray about it as though it's going to be someday in the future. Oh, we don't want you to think about it religiously because you understand a verse of Scripture like Hebrews 10, 19, with all boldness come now with the blood of Jesus Christ into the holies of holies. We want you to understand the translation of it all, the beauty and the glory of it all. Jesus Christ is set here tonight to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire, but he cannot do it outside of your hunger and thirst. He cannot do it outside of your will. Jesus Christ is here to heal you of whatever disease that you have. You could be deaf. You could be blind. You could have cancer. You could have other incurable diseases. Christ Jesus is here to heal you tonight. It just depends on what you believe about him. Two blind men came to Jesus and said, Would you heal us? And Jesus looked at them and said, Are you, Do you believe I'm able to do this? There's a lot of people that they don't really believe that Jesus is able to do it today. But he is. They had the right answer. Yes, Lord. And so what I find is this realm of divine glory. When I'm not superficial about nothing. I'm in the holies of holies, you see. I'm standing before the living God. I'm not just singing some sing-along song. I'm praying a prayer. I'm vowing a vow. I'm talking to the Father set in a, in, just in a, in a unique way. It's set to music. So I say, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful. 
thunder fall to me. I want you to understand something. You have any sin going on in your life at all, you can't come in. In fact, you're a reproach, you're an ugly thing. Not because you maybe aren't pretty on your facial appearances or whatever, but in your spirit, you got you have activity of demon spirits. And then and then the presence of God, that's death. That's like carrying a corpse around. And nobody's feeling good about somebody carrying a corpse around. But I recognize today in this generation, people really into death. They told me recently that one of the great series that's on TV that everybody likes to watch is The Walking Dead. I can't even imagine. Satan is into death. Demon spirits are into death. How people can be into death, they have to have an allegiance with demon spirits. How you can be into adultery. How you can be into pornography. How you can be into uh, fornication. You have to have a demon spirit, a stronghold of Satan to even do that. Because God's people hate that one, nothing to do with that, greed by it. The Holy Ghost, the spirit of holiness won't be anywhere near it. Only people that can come into his mountain are those who have a pure heart and clean hands. Not lifted up their soul unto vanity. Not sworn deceitfully. That's what Papa said. And he knows what he's talking about. Everybody else doesn't know what they're talking about. Me included. But if I quote a scripture, if I declare his word, if I'm willing to hearken unto his voice, because he's calling out right now. And, and you know, he was like, I want to hear the audible voice of the Lord. Well, you want, what are you going to do with that? You get to hear the audible voice of the Lord after you obey all the ones that has been already been given. And the fact of it is, the Lord said by his servant Peter, he said, we were there, we heard the audible voice. We were in the mountain. I'm quoting from 2 Peter chapter 1 now, beginning about 14, verse 14. So we were there in the mountain when he was transfigured, when his very clothes began to radiate with the glory of God. His very clothes, the garments that he was wearing, was overwhelmed by the anointing in his life. His face shined like the sun. Father appeared speaking to him. There was Elijah and Moses. Pretty radical, huh? I'm so blessed to have my friends from just outside Tokyo come visit us, to come fly in, come visit us. Such a blessing to be in Tokyo. And I'm just, I believe in Father's going to give Tokyo 28 million people to pastor here. Hallelujah. 28 million people, the largest city in, in, the, in the world. 28 million people. You know, when I hear babies crying, you want to hear them saying, Pastor, come pray for me. I have the, interpret I have the gift of interpretation. <laughs> Pastor, come pray for me. Here, let me see baby for just a minute. I don't think I'll pray for baby. Come here, baby. Yeah, come up here. Yo <laughs> calemas. Oh, Lord Jesus, bless baby. Lord Jesus, bless, bless baby. Aligato. Bless baby right now. Where are these strange looking faces? These Americans, they don't look right. We love Asia so much. He's fine. We love Asia so much. And we walked into the nation of Japan and um, saw a free society that was an unreached people group. Couldn't believe it. And, and the Lord showed us many things about the nation of Japan and also laid upon our hearts that he was going to use us in an unlimited way there. Hallelujah. I, I figure an unlimited way is a much bigger way than a mighty way. Praise God. Amen. So we're just looking forward to things that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to do. The Lord will do many great, wonderful things. The Lord's going to do wonderful things through anybody who cooperates with him. This is what he said. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, he said, All authority is given to me in heaven and earth. And then he said, Go. Huh? He said, All authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Now he wants us to go on his behalf and go be the ministers of reconciliation, the ambassadors of the throne. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
And what he wants us to do is he wants us to do what he did. He wants us, number one, cast out devils. You know, it's a wonderful thing to be able to communicate the presence of the Lord Jesus that where you go, people are impacted by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that is in your life. This is the way the Lord designed it. He says he, it's like for you and I, we become baptized in the Holy Ghost. We drink of this wonderful gift. Out of our innermost being flows unlimited expressions of his divine glory, which Jesus Christ likened it unto rivers of living water, not a fire hose, huh? not a babbling stream, not a creek, huh? nah, not a river. Huh? Creek, that's the way they say Kentucky. The, not, not, not a single river, huh? but rivers of living water. This make he of the Holy Ghost. This, he was talking about the Holy Ghost when he said this, that out of our lives would flow, flow such an overwhelming dimension of the power of God. <laughs> My goodness, what a, what a blessing. You know, uh, the, the glory of uh, Christ Jesus was in the woman Mary. My wife just mentioned that. And at her just greeting saying, hey, Elizabeth, I'm here. It, just, by, just by the sound of her voice, the power of the Holy Ghost was communicated so much so that the greatest prophet that ever lived was filled with the Holy Ghost at the, in the third trimester in the womb of Elizabeth. Pretty radical, huh? Somebody said, how old do children need to be before they're baptized in the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Hallelujah. Three or third trimester by Scripture. Hallelujah. Everybody else, you speculate. I'm just going to give you the Word of God. Amen? There's so much information in the Bible, we don't need to speculate another day in our life. You've got so many answers in the Word of God. I answer for every question. Give me a question. I'm not thinking, I was asking the Lord. I said, Lord, you know what I ought to do? I ought to just invite people to come ask any question. Then you anoint me to show them in the Scripture that you have an answer for every question. Tonight, if I started taking questions, I guarantee you that Lord Jesus Christ has an answer for every one of your questions. And you may be burning right now going, well, I wish I could ask him the question I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> well, you know what? You could go to our website, www.abidingplace.org. There's a little button there. You take your mouse and click. Or if you've got a finger pad, just whatever. And, then, and uh, email the pastor. And email me that burning question. Whether you're watching YouTube right now or watching on the web, doesn't matter. You're sitting in this building. Christ Jesus has an answer for every one of your questions. I'm going to tell you right now, he can give you wisdom and insight that where it has settled the issue of those things that you are confused about. True. Spirit of wisdom is here. Spirit of counsel. And if you're willing to come participate with God, hallelujah, you're going to find that there is a glorious realm. There is a divine realm. There is a heavenly realm. I know what's going on. I know what's happened. Most people have only found a religious realm. And there's no power there. With very little power. Oh, there's just a bunch of religious stuff. That's dead, stale, you know, it's really nothing. But in the realms of relationship with the Lord, my goodness, the power of divine glory, you know, where we see, you know, uh, overseas, we see tens of thousands of people rush the platform when we call for those who want to accept Jesus, people bound in Hinduism, people bound in Buddhism. Every form of religion in the United States to America, it's not really that way yet. It's about to be. About to be. Hallelujah. Papa's about ready to do some amazing things to glorify the name of his only begotten son, Jesus. Just watch what happens. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to open up your Bibles and to Acts chapter 4. I should open up my Bible too. People think that, you know, they look at me and say, well, he doesn't open up his Bible. So I mean, but I don't have to open up my Bible either. Well, I've been spending all week memorizing it. Why don't you join me? Hallelujah. Why don't you join me? Praise God. Let that word of God be written upon the tables of your heart. Start speaking according to the word instead of speaking according to what you think. According to what might be, what may be. According to what, you know, this one said and that one said. What deadhead said. Come on, forget about it. I ain't going to help you out. Hallelujah. Don't let this law of life, don't let the words of this law of life depart out of your mouth. But declare it continually. Speak it out. And if you don't know about that particular Verse of scripture, I just posted something on our website. Go to Abiding Place Church a website and you can see a message on that verse of scripture. Uh, we have on our website, literally, um, thousands of verses, thousands of verses of scripture with three, four, five paragraphs to help you understand what the verse of scripture said. Amen. Amen. And a bunch of verses of scripture referencing. See my background's in science. 
and science. You don't come up with any ideas on your own. You have to be completely immersed in the, what we call the literature. <laughs> and then somebody might take notice and say, well, you know, we could possibly consider that he knows something about what he's talking about. Oh, my goodness, all the more in the, work, in the, in the things of the Spirit. And nobody should be speaking after their own, you know, thinking, own crazy ideas. Are you, are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? You need a reference. I need, I need some citations. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, are you with me? Yeah. Dear people, I pray in the name of Jesus, you'll start grabbing the whole of the word, speaking according to the word. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, so I should get my Bible, shouldn't I? Well, let me just say this. You can go ahead and start in verse 13. We'll work our way through this. But uh, I want you to recognize something. I want you to, how many of you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost with an initial evidence? You've been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of tongues. Good, okay, that's just the initial evidence. That isn't the complete thing. Are you understanding me? Somebody said, well, what are you talking about? I'm talking about what you read about in the day of Pentecost, the last thing that Jesus said. One of the last things Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 5, he said, you, John, baptize you with water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. It's one of the last things that Jesus said. Isn't that beautiful? That's what he said. John, speaking of him, said he's the one who baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire. I'm baptizing with water and repentance. He's going to baptize in the Holy Ghost in fire. And um, so Jesus, one of the last things he said was, you get ready to be baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire? Because I'm going to go up, I'm going to ascend up on high. And, I, and I'm going to pour forth my anointing upon you after that I'm raised from the dead, and that will be the expression and declaration that I've raised from the dead and transferred to everyone who will believe resurrection life and resurrection power. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, if I got on that tonight, it would scare some of you. Huh? It excites some of the rest of you. But God has already provided for us right now. He's given us a guarantee and a pledge that, 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 that this mortal will be, this mortality will be swallowed up with life and that we will put on a heavenly tabernacle in the heavens that is eternal. Praise God. My goodness. I'm a robot. What a wonderful thing. And, um, so, you know, we got the initial evidence that we've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, well, what does that mean, baptized in the Holy Ghost? That is an unlimited source of power. Hallelujah. Free power. Don't pay nothing for it. Unlimited, greater power than any solar energy of every bit of solar energy, including the calimetric, calimetric energy could be captured within that uh, Energy radiating from the sun or the heat energy. It's far greater than, than that. I mean, goodness. You could absorb every bit of the power of the sun. Far greater. Take all the power that you can possibly think of that uh, exists within the smallest little molecules. That atomic power that was something revealed just, pre just earlier in uh, the last century. Take all the power, and that cannot compare to the power that is given in a baptism. A baptism. Understand. Jesus was, is, was and is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. And he said, you'll be baptized. You'll be endued with power from on high. You'll be baptized not many days from now. now understand that. What happened when, the, when that day came? The scripture says they were filled. Filled is equal to baptism. Hallelujah. Just how filled did you get? So full. It's like, it's like jumping in the water, sinking to the bottom, and <gasps> breathing. Huh? Yes. So filled that is the Holy Ghost not only with you, but in you, surrounding you, immersing you in divine power and glory. Look, that's what the Bible says. I can't help it about religion. Come on now. When you're so saturated with the presence of God, how can Satan get at you? How can an angel of darkness get at you? Well, I want you to understand this. Angels, cherubim, angels, angels, great and might and power. I'm not talking about demon spirits. I'm talking about angels right now. Okay? Satan, who we call Lucifer, is a, is a, is a word. It simply means 
um, Latin word that simply means morning star. That's what it means. Kokav Bokar in Hebrew language. Morning star. And uh, he was a cherubim angel. And his power of deception was so great, his lie and his influence so powerful, that he was able to deceive a great host of angels who spent an unlimited, undefined period of time worshiping God, beholding Father in all of His glory, carrying out Father's works. And he was able to come and deceive those, that mighty host to where that we read according to the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation chapter 12, he drew away one-third of them. One-third. What you going to do? Well, how are you going to stand up against him? How are you going to stand up against him? Who do you think you are? Anyways. Huh? <laughs> Come give me a break. Huh? Not for a moment. Not for a moment. The only possible way that you and I have any place of liberation from the influence of that satanic power is that we find ourselves in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is the only man defeated Satan. Christ Jesus defeated him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Destroyed his work. And gave to us the ability, he said, to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy so that nothing can by any means hurt us. Well, what verse scripture is that? Does anybody know? Huh? We might be giving out some, might be giving out some prizes. I might get a star in your crown here. Hallelujah. Do you know? Do you know where these do you know where this truth is? Huh? You know where the truth is? You could say amen or ouch or who knows. Something respond. You know where these things are? Look. Somebody said, Well, I just can't memorize nothing. I've been I was born, you know, not too bright. Hey, listen, the Holy Ghost will make you bright. Listen, Holy Ghost will baptize you in the glory and the fire of his presence so that you can shine as the light to the world. Amen. Holy Spirit. Ooh, ha, we will read die you to a Kanaya. Like Rubanesia. Write these things upon the tables of your heart. Well, the, listen, Satan's biggest attack against God's people, the believer, even those who are baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Think about that. I want you to think about baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire. Could you take it to the limit for just a minute? Could you take it to the way that Jesus defined it? The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it knows Him not. Huh? It cannot understand Him, see Him, neither can it know Him, neither can the world know Him, but you know Him, for He's with you and shall be in you. Baptized, baptized, baptized on the scale that goes beyond the anointing and the, and the power and the authority that Elijah had in his life. It goes way beyond the power, the anointing, and the authority that anybody else you read about in the Old Testament had manifested in their life. The only possible person that you can begin to even relate to with respect to how much power, to how much authority, to how much glory this is, is to look at Jesus. And then Jesus says, Jesus says, listen to what Jesus said. Gee, just, I want you to go, go with me. Are you with me? Are you hanging here? Jesus said, not somebody, not, a, not uh, Augustine, not, you know, whoever else your favorite person is. And it's not what they said. They didn't get one verse of Scripture in the Bible. Jesus said, Anyone that believes should do these works. Anyone that believes. He didn't say first century church. He didn't say 12 apostles. He didn't say uh, 100, um, 120 only. Or 70 others also. And a possibility of 120 beyond that. He said anyone. And if you're going to eliminate John 14, 12, then you must by virtue of that elimination eliminate all the rest of it. If that doesn't apply to you, then, the, then he that calls upon the name of the Lord should be saved. Doesn't apply to you either. Salvation doesn't apply to you. Huh? The work of Christ doesn't apply to you in any measure. People want to escape the reality of contemplation. Why? Because Satan wants to prevent you. He wants to neutralize you from ever taking up the authority that Christ Jesus has given us when he said all authority is given to me, not only in heaven but also in earth. Go in my name. Man, baptize the nations. Make disciples out of the nation. Go do these works and great works. Anyone who believes. I said anyone who believes. That's what God said. Anyone. And I, I'm telling you right now, I don't need to break down semantically what anyone means. Praise God. 
and him out of Aishi. Anyone who believes on me, that's the point. Do you believe on Jesus? And what do you believe about him? Anyone who believes on me. These works shall, he, they do, he do. And greater works than these. Ah, hallelujah. Now, Satan comes with every one of his works, with every one of his tricks, to try to take away boldness, try to take away confidence. Because none of this is going to happen outside of boldness and confidence. The Lord Jesus has locked up, God has locked up all this realm of divine power and faith within the framework of our relationship with Him. He describes in John chapter 15 our relationship with Him on this level. He said, I tell you, here's how it works. You the branches, I'm the vine. The Father is the husband. And I mean, when you've got yourself a person who's a good uh, horticulturist, uh, the person who's a good vine dresser, good husbandman, my goodness, they can produce some amazing results. They can re produce some prize-winning fruit, can't they? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what you're doing. Father knows exactly what he's doing. Jesus said, come abide in me. You've got you to be willing to come into a place of drawing all your life from me. This is where a lot of people get cut right there. Because we want a little bit of God and a whole lot of the world. We don't understand that everything that is going on in the world is emulating what's going on in a satanic world. I've been there. The Lord's taken me there in visions, and I've actually seen angels doing their works, dressing their dress, speaking their words, saying their things, singing their songs, and then it immediately be done in the realms of men. And now that's the, that's the going thing. That's the, that's the trend now. That's the fashion. That's the style. That's what's cool. Jesus described it like this in John chapter 8. He said to the Pharisees, you do what your father, the devil, does. Whatever he does, you emulate it. He said, I do what my father does. Everything you see me doing, I'm doing what my father has shown me to do. He's called us into the same thing. People pray this prayer. Our father which art in heaven, hallowed it is, be thy name, for it is sacred. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in this earth in my life that is in heaven. How many people say that across the earth today and mean it? Or even recognize or even consider or think for a moment, really, truly, about what it is that they're saying. I want you to consider baptism in the Holy Ghost. I want you to consider unlimited power. I want you to consider unlimited authority. And I want you to consider the life of obedience that Christ Jesus has called us to. Come abide in Him. He said, if I, you abide in me and my word abides in you, then you'll ask whatever you will. Somebody said, well, I asked. I'm going to tell you right now. Yeah, but you asked wrong. You're going to have to get yourself over abiding in Christ Jesus and let his word abide in you because you're the ones wrong. God's not wrong. God's going to make good on all of his supply and all of his provision. We can't fault him. We can't say his Bible's messed up. He messed up. We can fall down on our knees. We can repent. We can ask the fire of God to fall upon our life. We can say, Jesus, come take your blood. Cleanse me right now. I want to get this thing right. I mean, Paul was very radical about it. You know, I think 2 Corinthians chapter 6 is one of the most radical calls made to the church. And, and, and separation, a dividing line, you know. And he says, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. And I shall receive you. Huh? Jesus said something very similar to that. What Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. He said something very similar to that. He said, if you obey me, my Father will love you. That would mess up some people's doctrine right there. Uh, hallelujah. John 14, 23, verse 24. He says, if you love me, you obey me. And my Father will love you. What, you mean you tell me? Father's not going to love me till I obey him? Well, Jesus said so. Say, so can we translate it some other way? No. You have to deal with about 15 verses of Scripture that says basically the same thing. Well, I thought God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He did. Absolutely. God loves the world. He loves the whole world, but not in a relationship. He doesn't have a relationship with them. He loves them. Not, he came. God was in Christ reconciling the world into not counting the sin. Because if he counted the sin, he judged the sin. We can see a day coming where God will judge the sin. God will judge every man. 
And knowing the terror of the Lord, we thus persuade men that if one died for all, then all are now dead. That we should no longer live to ourselves, but to him who died for us and rose again. Now, where are you going to get living for yourself out of that? All I can get out of that is you must deny yourself. Come, take up your cross. Come, follow Jesus. Come on, let's walk a new life. Let's come walk in the Spirit. Let's come be led by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let's be so overwhelmed by God. Jesus said, if you love me, you obey me. If you love me, you'll obey me. My Father will love you. We'll come make our dwelling with you. That's what he said. He said, I'll come manifest myself to you. Well, you know what? I'm a witness that that's true. I'm a witness that that's true. And so people come up with all these ideas about all these various different things, you know, like, you know, that there's aliens on other planets. <laughs> well, show me, the, show me some living proof of that right now. Show me some. Oh, that we came, we evolved from Echinodermis purpuralis. That's our nearest invertebrate uh, family member. Show me some living evidence of any of that. Right now, show me some, any proof, any data. Let me see it. Huh? Okay, who put the freeze on the program, buddy? Huh? Okay, give me a break. We believe all kinds of things which there's no evidence or data for. And all it is is other religions. We've been saved for a long time. We came from the rocks. Huh? Our fathers are the rocks. Huh? Huh? When we look unto our ancestor, the cattle. I mean, goodness gracious. They had a, they, you know, I'd rather come from a cow than a monkey any day. <laughs> are you with me? <laughs> I tell you, cows, these cows are decent. Monkeys are just indecent. They're just indecent. They're gross. They're indecent. If you've been in Africa, or you've been in Malaysia, or you've been in the jungles anywhere, been around monkeys, monkeys are indecent. They pesky, indecent things. My goodness, they're unclean in every possible concept of the word. Uh, uh, uh. Not one shred of evidence. But concerning this power of the Holy Ghost, 1906, April 1906, just, it's only been a little over 100 years. 50 people gathered together up 90 miles from here in a place called Azusa Street. 50 people touched heaven, crying out to God, calling, asking God to send his fire, asking Christ Jesus to baptize them in the Holy Ghost and fire, according to his ministry. Today, a little over 100 years later, there's 600 million now. From 50 to 600 million in a little over 100 years. That's a lot of data points. Uh, uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Huh? Put your 95% confidence interval around that. Uh, listen to me. There's no variation. There's no room for variation. This is something reproducible. This work of grace, this divine visitation, this transforming power of God. Listen, I'm not talking about just religion. Sign up on the religious sign of things. There's all kinds of stuff going on. I'm talking about an interaction where that this wonderful proof and evidence of the love of Christ Jesus, you no know, relationship love. You know, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. You know what He tells you and me to do, right? He tells us to love our enemies. How does he tell us to love our enemies? He says, bless them. Huh? Bless them to persecute you. Blessing them. I mean, what happens if you start walking in the Holy Ghost, walking in obedience, God start doing that? Your life will change. Your life change. Consecrate yourself on January 1st, 2014, to walking this way, and by the end of the year, your whole life will be different. Come with me. Join with me in the school of the Spirit that we're going to do here. Let me teach you how to pray. Let me teach you how to take a hold of God and go deeper. Get out of the superficial stuff. And one year, your whole life, your whole life will be different. You'll start living out the life described in the Bible. It's true. You'll begin to have a vision and a passion uh, for nations. And not going to go there with some pamphlets and some, you know, project to build somebody a house. And go there and shake the place with the power of God. Huh? And go with signs, wonders, and miracles. Cast out devils. See the blind, see the deaf, hear the cripple walk. Huh? There's people sitting on in the church all over. They, they don't believe God the healer today. Huh? They don't believe Jesus is the healer. Yet Jesus is just as much the healer as he is the Savior. Just as much the Savior as he is the healer. And every verse of Scripture talks about him as he's the Savior. says he's also the healer. Hallelujah. That's the new covenant. Praise God. Baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire. My goodness gracious. There is, there is no room for anything else to live in that place. Paul said, he tells us, he says, redeem the days for the, redeem the time for the days are evil. 
Don't be unwise, but be wise, knowing what is the will of the Father. What is the will of God concerning you? Be continually filled with the Spirit. To be filled with the Spirit, it's already been equated to being baptized, being immersed. As a, somebody said, well, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost so many years ago. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost right now. Huh? Somebody said, when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I lost the English language. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I couldn't speak English. But you know what? I practice that on a daily basis. In fact, we could go there right this very moment. And I'd be having a hard, difficult time even saying anything. But I'm be sober for your sake. I'm going to stand here. I'm going to declare this word of life because I believe God will change you. I know God will change you if you're willing. Now, here we are in this place of divine power and grace where we're now growing and maturing. Where, my goodness, the Holy Ghost has come to teach us how to walk this walk. He'll show us where we're not consecrated. He'll show us where we're compromising. He'll show us where we got nonsense going on in life. Listen, people, I'm going to tell you something. The spirit of rebellion that saturates the atmosphere plays on you. Plays on you. The spirit of lust that saturates the atmosphere plays on you. Plays on you now. The Lord wants to teach you how to live in a realm where those powers of darkness can't play on you. Paul says to us in, in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, he said, be strong in the strength of the Lord and power of his might. Well, how powerful is that? Power, that's pretty powerful. I'd say that that's unlimited power once again. Strong, strength of the Lord, power of his might. How powerful is the Father? How powerful is God? And if I take a wild guess, how powerful is God? How, I mean, how, how, how many days does Satan get it up on him? You know, kind of thing. Get, get it over on him. Uh, pull the wool over his eyes. No, no, no. Forget about it. It's ridiculous to even say that. The Lord says, I'm going to empower you. I'm empower, empowering you. You can have my strength. You can have my power. Now, well, who's going to believe that? Who's going to con be consecrated to that? Who's going to practice that? Who's going to participate with it? You, you can't have these things unless you participate. Somebody says, I want to know more love. I want to know more about more walking love. How am I going to love my enemies? Well, that's what the Lord tells you to do. He says, once you love your enemies. Huh? He loved his enemies when we were yet enemies by wicked works. God committed his love towards us. That's what he did. God so loved the world. He gave his son and begotten son. Is that true? true. That's absolutely true. It's unquestionably true. Now, if you start participating with that and you love your enemies, how are you going to do that? You have to be filled with the same love that, love that, 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 that sent the only begotten Son. And that love has been provided. Now, how does the Lord tell you to treat your neighbors? Who's your neighbors? That's the person you just ran up against, just ran into at the store. Huh? That's the person behind you on I-5 blowing their horn. Huh? And that's the person swerving in your lane, giving you the California wave or whatever. Well, you, that's your neighbor. What are you supposed to do with a neighbor? You're supposed to love them as you love yourself. Now, how many of you are practicing that? How many participate with that? So that the, Lord, the Lord gave a love for the enemies. He gave a love for the people that we run up against. We don't know them. And the Lord just made it an encounter, casual encounter, because he used, in, in, when he t described that, you know what he said, he used the example of a Samaritan man who saw a person who was probably a Jewish man who had been overrun by thieves, stripped naked, and robbed. The priest went by, and the Levi went by, here comes a Samaritan. What did Samaritan do? Samaritan took care of him, right? Treated him very, very well. Took care of all that he had need of. Just like he was being caring for himself. That's what Jesus is saying. That's your neighbor. Huh? Now, you know what he says? So he, he says, I want you to love your neighbor as yourself as you love yourself. Now, concerning the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what he says? Now, I want you to love one another with the same love that I loved you with. Now, there's another love, a whole other dimension of love, a divine love. Powerful, isn't it? Huh? It's all in the framework of the love of God. The bottom line of it is, you don't get out of this on any measure for any reason about loving. Okay, that's my point. Well, if you start participating with love, two hands for beginners, start right there in your home, right? Huh? Right? Two hands for beginners. Are you with me? Keep both hands on the handlebars. I figure people are going to have to start loving them who love, uh, start loving those who love them before they're ever going to start loving those who hate them. That ain't going to happen. And it just ain't going to happen. You have to grow into that. Are you with me? You want to start participating with the love of God? You want to start feeling the love of God? Here's what you do. Just start hugging people. 
Just start hugging. Start genuinely just what will happen tonight before this place is, before we finish in this meeting, there will be a tangible love in the house. Especially if I start walking around laying hands on people. Transferring to you what God gave to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh. Now, if I'm just one of your peers, you ain't going to get much from your peers. Forget about it. Huh? Slap upside the back of the head is about the best it can be. <laughs> you ain't going to get much from your peers. And then there's nothing about peers here. Huh? It's not about something that we're born with. It's something that we have innately. Something that is gifted by the Holy Ghost to the church. The Lord put in the church first apostles, secondarily prophets, after that teachers. You know what he did after that? That's what he put in the church. It's, it's just in the church. People don't believe the apostles in the church, but they in the church. You know what verse scripture I'm quoting right now? What am I quoting? First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, or my church. Quoting verse 26. So let's see this. Put it first in apostles, pro secondarily prophets, after that teachers. That's what's in the church. You can't have, you can't, you take away the church. If you take away those things, you take away the church. You do. And he said, after that, what did he put in there? Miracles. It's in the church. Gives healing in the church. It's residence it's right here. It's right here. As real as Christ Jesus had those things in his life, if Jesus Christ was standing here right now, there, and, and, and just that real. These things are resident. They're right here. They're now at this moment here. The only difference is sometimes America is a lot more like Nazareth. We are familiar with Jesus. We think we know who he is. And so we interact with him. If I go into a foreign country, they didn't, they've never heard of Jesus. Huh? I just tell the Hindus, I say, listen, the living God is coming to your village today. Eyes get real big. The living God. He's coming today. And I just talked with him, and he told me he personally wants to meet me. That works in West Bengal, brother, in Sikkim. I'm going to Sikkim. I'm seeking him in a Sikkim. Fire God's going to fall on Sikkim. Be warming up for Kashmir. God's going to bust Kashmir right open. It's one of the most hostile places on the planet to Christianity. More hostile than North Korea. More hostile than the Sudan. More hostile than Chad. We, God, Father, about to, Father about to do the work. Hallelujah. That no man would believe, even if they saw it. It's told it. I'm going to be right in the big middle of it. Because I'm, 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 I'm letting God, the Holy Ghost, fashion me according to the word. I'm not being fashioned according to the measure of what men believe. I'm not going to do it. I'm kept by the power of God. I'm over here it's in a realm called sanctified. In a place set apart by the Holy Ghost to be taught God's word. It's not some, you know, holiness movement concept. It's set apart by the living God to be taught how to walk out a walk that is essential for men's salvation. Essential that the gospel be preached. This same gospel of the kingdom must be preached as a witness to all the nations. Then the end shall come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then after that, after gifts of healing, the resident right here, right now, what he put? Helps, governments. What he put in after that? They all, you know what? They all end this together. It's not like it's a hierarchy. He just, it's not a list, a priority list. And after that, what? Diversity of tongues. Sikata mang daily mon bada man lete. It's for a message. Okay? Earlier I was singing in tongues. Paul said, what should we do? He said, we shall sing with the understanding, sing with the Spirit also. And he made very clear that singing in tongues is singing the same as singing in the Spirit. Praying with the understanding is using the language, the native tongue of the people that you were around at that moment in time. Mm -hmm. Diversity of tongues. There's tongues for praying. There's tongues for praying, praising. There's tongues for singing. There's tongues for interpretation. There's tongues... For laying hands on the sick. I believe it was Reinhardt who told the story. Was it Reinhardt? No, Fred Roberts. It was Fred Roberts who told the story. Fred Roberts shook South Africa. Fred Roberts told the story. I was there when he told it. 
Are you listening to me? And then hearsay. I was there when he told the story. Fred Roberts told the story. God used him to shake the whole Zulu nation. Zulu. The Zulus were so steeped in witchcraft. I used Fred Roberts to shake those people. And uh, one of the primary languages, Swahili. He was in France ministering in a church. And all of a sudden, a woman let out a shrill in the back. She began to speak with other tongues. And what she did, she was speaking in a language that only Fred Roberts could understand because he was the only one there that spoke Swahili. She was speaking, it was an unknown tongue as far as everybody else was concerned. She was speaking primarily in Swahili, mixed with some other dialects, casting a devil out of someone who was up in the front, commanding a demon spirit to leave them, who sh the person in the front collapsed under the power of God. Everybody who had discernment, spiritual eyes, and spiritual understanding knew what was going on. Everybody else was just kind of clueless. Whether it's a woman screaming in the back and somebody falling in the front. This place is a madhouse. I'm out of here. <laughs> you know? Because spiritual things are weird. And you know what I'm saying? Why are they weird? Because they're not normal. It's not every day happening, you know? Uh, it's not every day you see somebody come. It's a stormy night. There's not a light on, out because it's a stormy night. There's no stars, man. There's no moon. It's a stormy night. I mean, it's a storm, bad storm. And here comes a light walking on the water. I mean, goodness gracious. The, the disciples were scared out of their mind. They said it's a phantom, the phantom. It's an evil spirit. Jesus said, no, it's me, man. Fear not. And that's about what, you know, it gives us pause. We can understand why people get so freaked out as soon as something starts to happen in the supernatural. Ah! That's what the disciples did. They'd been with Jesus, seeing all kinds of signs, wonders, and miracles. We just got to say, people just got to trust us. We can say, fear not. Fear not. It's Jesus. We know the difference between a demonic realm. I'm sitting around watching The Walking Dead. I wouldn't be able to. I'm sitting around watching scary movies, things that frighten create fear. It's another realm. I'm not into fear, man. I'm not a fear monger. I'm not into fear. Are you with me? I'm into love. I mean, I'm into love. Cast out fear. I want no fear around me. Never. Forget about it. I'm not interested. I don't want the feeling. My heart, my emotions have been set apart unto the Lord. I don't want that stuff working in me. I'd be so, I would be so grieved. Like my heart would be taken out of my, I'd feel like my heart was taken out of my chest being just, you know, stomped on or something. I'd be so grieved on the inside. I'd be so sick. I'd be spiritually sick. What we would do, participate with. My daughter asked me, she then said to me, because we see the rise of the occult. <laughs> Not make-believe occult, occult. Harry Potter stuff, witchcraft, wickery, new age stuff. Really producing some results by their interaction with demon spirits. That's the occult. And he said to me, he said, Dad, why does it seem so easy for people just to go slip right over into that realm and yet seem so hard for people to step, slip over into the realms of the spirit? Why is it that people gravitate towards those things? And I said, well, baby, listen here. Understand that all around us, the music, the advertisements, the programs, the interest, the conversation, it's all saturated by and large with that which is going on in a demonic realm. Imagine, let's turn this around for a minute and imagine that all the music, all the programs, all the advertisement, and all the interest was about the Holy Ghost, about heavenly things, about that which belongs to the kingdom of God and the ministry of Jesus. You slip right over into that realm. You slip right over into that realm. Man, if I can get people to come fast and pray with me for 21 days, your life would be changed. Getting people to come fast for three days is a, a miracle of biblical proportions. <laughs> Your life will be changed. When you get so hungry for food, all of a sudden you get introduced for the first time to your passions. Hello, passion. Hello, emotion. Hello, deep heart of truth within my life. Hello, spiritual man. 
Huh? I'm even very acquainted with what they see in the mirror, but there's something far more going on. It's an earthly tabernacle. It's an earthly tabernacle. And if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, hallelujah, we're not going to be unclothed and be just simply a spirit floating around, according to Paul, what Paul said in his message in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through uh, 10. But we'll be clothed upon, hallelujah, with an eternal tabernacle made without hands, a heavenly body, just like what Jesus had when he walked through the walls. He said, come touch me. He walked through the walls. Talk about paradox. He walked through the walls said, touch me. Huh? He walked through the walls said, touch me. Spirit hath not flesh and bone. Huh? Here, go ahead. Put your hands in the nail prints. Put your hand in the side. Wow. What a resurrected body, eh? Yeah. Hallelujah. You can actually prove that mathematically, believe it or not. Give science enough time, they'll be able to, if they had enough time, they would be convinced. Yep, God created everything. Yep, yep, yeah. And this is all true. But if man doesn't have that much time, huh? The De Broglie Lee principle. Take a bowling ball, roll it at a brick wall, mathematically can prove it. If the frequencies match, bowling ball will fall, pass through the brick wall. Both materials remain intact. Pretty mathematically. Huh? Because what? They're seeing things through science, certain scientific tools that, have been, refi that have, been, have been refined that go on about in the realm of the spirit world. It's true. Hey, there is a parallel universe. Huh? One of them's demonic and the other is the kingdom of the dear son. <laughs> Which one are you in? Who's your father? Either the devil or, or, or uh, the father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You either serving satanic realm or are you serving Jesus? You either walking in a demonic spirit or are you walking in the Holy Spirit? And people that are walking in the Holy Spirit many times because of things that they do not believe, Satan is getting an advantage on them. Satan's getting an advantage on them, putting sickness and disease on them. I was telling my brother today, he was telling me when he was in the prayer line in Japan, and when I laid my hands on him, the translator said, uh, be healed. But his son, was, who speaks English very well, said, no, that ain't what he said. That's not what he said. He said, you walk in divine health now. Huh? So I was explaining to him what it meant by divine health. We know the testimony of a man 88 years old, right around in there. He never was sick a day in his life, never even had a cavity. You know what is outstanding about the man? He never spoke an ill thing against anyone, ever. He never took up a reproach with his mouth. He never pointed the finger of accusation. Huh? The scripture says, keep your tongue from, tongue from evil and your lips that they speak no guile. Depart from evil and pursue peace. The Lord, he says, then the face of the Lord is upon the righteous. And his ears are open to their prayers. But it's a face against them that do wicked. And what is the definition of doing wicked in Psalms 34 there and in also in 1 Peter chapter 2 where it's quoted again? Speaking evil of your neighbor. So people want to have the blessing. Oh, I'm leaving divine health. Yeah, because you're blabbing your mouth about everybody. You're telling something bad about somebody all the time. No wonder you don't believe in divine health. You couldn't have divine health. You can't get close to divine health. You had to quit cursing people, start blessing them so you can inherit a blessing. There's a lot of principles, dear people, a lot of simple word of God that we're not willing to obey. And these things are going to have to be sorted out in our lives. We're going to go ahead and move on in God and begin to reckon with what it truly means to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost, that's the spirit of holiness. I don't care if it's in the Hebrew language. Whether you're speaking the Hebrew language or you're speaking the Greek language, you can translate it Holy Spirit or Spirit of Holiness. No difference. Uh, I'm baptized in the Spirit of Holiness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I had a preacher sitting by me one time in a meeting, and he says to me, he says, he, he, nudge me. It's actually Mike Francine back in the late 90s when he was running all over the world, ultimately collecting about 12 million souls. He nudged me. He said, Mark, he says, what, what, what does baptism actually mean anyways? Because, you know, some people have been telling about sprinkle. You can sprinkle people and be okay. I said, well, there was a physician in ancient Greek, and I can't and he's the first one to use the Greek word, and he used it in his recipe to describe how to pickle things. So you may understand being baptized as being pickled. Huh? You down, looky here now. <laughs> you soaked and you're not coming out. Hallelujah. You soak through and through. It's true. It's true. 
true. What does it mean to be baptized? It doesn't mean to be sprinkled. What does it mean to be baptized? What does it mean? How filled? How full do we get? It's not a theologian saying, how full do we get? Oh, my goodness gracious, man. What did you, where did you get your degree? Listen, how full do we get? You get so full that it's like rivers of living water coming out of your innermost being. It's more than you can contain. It's more than you can contain. And that's just not just, I mean, it's not just more than you can contain. Come on, huh? More than you can contain. You can just like, spit it out or whatever. This is just gushing out of you. Come on. This spiritual dimension of divine glory that we're allowing things that Satan is doing in the world around with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life to prevent us. With. And pride of life, Satan plays more there than anywhere else. I know just as much as you know. I know God just as well as you know God. Huh? I read my Bible. Boy, everybody's got the truth, you know. Everybody quote homosexuals quote scripture to defend their right with God. Mo Mormons huh? do. Jehovah's with. Oh, go on. Everybody's right. They right. They know more than anybody else. Right of life. Sits in the Pentecostal movement. It's very comfortable in the Pente Pentecostal movement. I'm cast the thing out. I'm cast the evil spirit out. I can cast out the spirit of pride as much as I can cast out the spirit of lust. I'm cast it out. And you know what? I'm, I make it very uncomfortable. My preaching makes it very uncomfortable. On Sunday mornings, we're moving to start processing thousands of sheep, thousands of fishes through here. Okay? God says, I'll make you fishers of men. Amen? Okay? Let's just be fishers of men then. And let's not go with one hook, a one hook program. Huh? Let's go with nets. Okay, are you with me? And let's just start bringing in. You throw out the net. Jesus said, the "Kingdom of heaven is like unto a, 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 a net that cast in the sea and draws of every kind, both good and bad." Right? Yeah. Then we just process them. Amen. Amen. And so Sunday morning is just going to be. You know, you need to get right with God because if you don't get right with God, you're going to bust hell wide open. Kind of message. Are you with me? Yeah. Hey, hallelujah. Of course, we're going to say it with all love and kindness and grace and mercy. But we're going to make sure that everybody understands. You got an opportunity to step into the life of God and leave the prison of hell that you're in. But if you choose a prison of hell, you, now you're going to live in a prison of hell for the rest of eternity. You're making a choice right now. Each person does. I don't believe that God, I don't believe God predetermined anyone to go to hell. I don't believe that about him. I, I, I'm reading the scripture says, God's not willing that any perish. Hallelujah. But all should come to the knowledge of salvation. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. That's what he said. So the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. The grace of God has appeared to all men, everyone. But, I'm, but you know what? The thing about it is, dear people, by the help and the grace of God, on Sunday nights, I'm going I'm to I'm call the fire of God down in this place. I believe God's going to fill this place up. That's why he worked a miracle, gave this place to us. $18 million property. I don't have $18 million. He does. They said, are you going to buy it? Yes. Good. Amen. I'm moving in. Where does the money come from? Heaven. Fish's mouth. Uh, uh, unforeseen areas. It isn't mine. No pressure. It's not my kingdom. It's his. It's not my business. I'm just the announcer. I'm just being a good steward. I'm just telling, declaring the words of his, of, of his life. I'm just declaring his word. I'm just declaring the word of faith. I'm just doing the things he said to do. He produces the results. Hmm? I'm going to tell everybody Jesus the same yesterday, day, before, today, and forever. If you demon possessed, you're going to be delivered. If you're blind, you'll see. If you're deaf, you hear. If you're crippled, you'll walk. Hmm? If you're diseased, you'll be cured. You'll be cleansed. Amen? And if you're dead, bring the dead. You got somebody dead be raised to life again. And the Lord Jesus is going to do it. And he does it. He does it. And he does it very effectively in places where people aren't already inoculated and think they know who Jesus is and just becomes like another Nazareth. Uh, there he could do no mighty works because of their unbelief, because of familiarity. Oh, we know who he is. That's what they said. Oh, we know who he is. We know his dad. We know his mother. Aren't his brother here, brethren here, and his sisters. Huh? But I'm telling you right now, the Lord has shown me. The Lord has shown me many years ago, and I'm standing in it. I've been prophesying it for many years. There is a day 
that is coming, a place that we've been prepared in God for, that even greater works should happen, so such that such that every hindrance and every power of religion will not be able to stop signs, wonders, and miracles. I mean, I'm, I'm focused on the Del Mar Fair 2014 to ground pull people out of wheelchairs at the fair. For me, I get in a crowd of people like that. People walking by me, I know exactly what they're doing. Word of knowledge. Just, I walk down the beach. I'm, I'm flooded with the word of knowledge. All I got to do is step out in the world. I, I can tell people where they've been, what's going on in their life, and usually starts there, and then I got their name before they tell me. I got their name. And I tell them their name. I said, Jesus knows who you are. Your name. Okay. That's no trick. And there's a lot of people running around doing tricks, trying to run in interference. But I'm going to preach the name of Jesus Christ. It's a powerful name to change their heart, to cause them to tremble, not be scared or shocked by some magic trick, some sleight of hand. Now, let me tell you how you do this. First of all, it's walking in relationship with the Lord because he has... In the key is, he's, Christ Jesus locked all of this up, all this power, all this unlimited glory in relationship with him. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen by formula. huh? You can decree and proclaim all you want. You can decree and confess all you want. It ain't got a formula here. Huh? Are you listening to me? Uh huh? You can quote the scripture to God all day long. He knows the word of God. You don't need to tell him what the word of God is. Lord, you said in your word. I think that is wrong to do in the first place. Don't do that. He knows exactly what you said, what he said in his word. You might remind yourself. Lord, I'm being reminded right now of what you said in your word. That's fine. Don't tell him. Don't go quoting the scripture to him. Uh, give me a break. He knew that all the time. But if you're not walking in a relationship with him, where you're going to obey him? Huh? Where you want what he wants? You're living to do the will of the Father. These things aren't going to happen. You can consult your checkbook. Find how much, how, how well you're walking with the Lord. You can consult your checkbook. I'm serious. You consult your time management. Where you're spending your time. When you begin to make the Lord first, when you seek first the kingdom of God, all these things be added to you. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Huh? You don't have to beg God for nothing. He's begging you. This is all his idea. Help God use me. What are you talking about? He wants to use you. What are you saying now? Use me. Huh? Start cooperating. Start participating. Because you're never going to know the love of God until you start participating with love. You're never going to know the joy until you start getting happy. And then sad has, sad's not allowed, allowed around. Sad isn't welcome. Not worry is not welcome. Just the healing, not going to work in your life till you start laying hands on people. Huh? Miracles aren't going to work in your life till you get yourself in a situation where you need a miracle. <laughs> laying hands on people for a miracle. Signs, wonders, miracle. Huh? There was a song written in the late, late 40s, early 50s. Expect a miracle every day. Expect a miracle when you pray. If you'll expect it, God will find a way. Form a miracle for you each day. I live by that. I believe that. I'm walking with the king. I'm walking in the realm. I'm constantly in need of miracles. I don't know about you. You might, me, you might not need a miracle. I say to people, what do you want me to pray for? Oh, I really don't need anything. Well, you are just absolutely in bliss. <laughs> and there's something associated with that. I don't say that, but I think it, goodness gracious, man, are you that far away from reality that you don't even know what you need? That a miracle is an, it's an outstanding thing that you need. Where, where, where are your relationship needs at with the Lord Jesus Christ? What, overcome, what thing, what sin tries to overcome you and take you out? What addiction is going on in your life? What thing depresses you and discourages you? I believe one of Satan's biggest propaganda against the church is his attempt to take away our boldness and our confidence. Huh? When I feel, when I get start 
when I start talking big talk, okay, God talk, miracle talk, signs, wonders talk, Jesus Christ is in me talk, I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost talk, I do these works and great works talk, anointings all over me. Huh? My car was broken down, broke down on me. It broke down. It broke down. Totally broke down. I mean, it's flat out broke down, should not be able to move. I learned that later, but it broke down on me. Huh? I put my hand on that key, transferred the anointing right from me into the key, not even thinking about it, just because that's who I am, and the thing started up. I drove it over there to the mechanics and parked it. said, this, something's wrong with the thing, man. Fix it. I said, do you have any idea what it is? I said, I'm pretty sure the fuel pumps exploded. <laughs> they got in it, started it up, went a couple of feet and broke down. Couldn't get it started. They had to get it towed into their own shop. <laughs> hey, man, there's a miracle ready to be happening. There's a miracle. I'm, I have problems sometimes remembering stuff, like filling up the gas tank and being out someplace where you're like 40 miles from a gas station and then noticing that the light is on, the fuel light that says you're empty. And then wondering, well, just how long has it been on? <laughs> huh? I just have a miracle. You know how I keep myself in a miracle when that, when, when, just, and a lot of times I don't even need to do that. Only if there's any kind of fear trying to torment me, any kind of uncertainty. I got confidence and I got boldness. In uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 13, Someone says, man, I've been holding my finger on this so long. It's numb. I got numb finger. Just wondering when he's going to get there. Believe it or not, there's a miracle realm happening right now. Believe it or not, there's a miracle realm happening right now. A miracle realm that is creating an atmosphere of faith for you to believe what God is saying so you'll start doing it. That's a miracle. Greatest miracle that I know of is the miracle of salvation where you get a new heart, new spirit. You get changed on the inside. What a miracle. Completely changed. Holy Ghost comes on the inside of you. Then Father begins to impart divine gifts and divine abilities. Faith that comes by hearing his word. Wow. And when I preach, it's different. Because it's saturated with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm expecting a miracle here. I'm not, I'm not preaching for any other reason than if you get so saturated with the power of God, you run to the nations. I'm not preaching to keep you. I'm preaching to send you. I'm not preaching for you to stay around. I'm preaching for you to go. Hear what God said. And to all the world, preach the gospel. Go. We'll get you, get you started here in Jerusalem, in the Jerusalem of San Diego. <laughs> Judea and Samaria, regions round about, and then the outermost parts of the earth. I just came back from the outermost parts of the earth. I'm going, going back again soon. Got a great crusade, gonna be doing it. We're gonna be doing great crusade this year in Irian Jaya. Who all did I say could go to Irian Jaya? You get to go. They're coming hands upon me. I mean, I already told you you get to go. Some of you are looking like, I want to go to the prison. And that's good, you should. But what I want you to do is want you to go preach on a street corner. Get people saved. Before you go preach to the cannibals out there in the jungle. Two hands for beginners. Huh? We you walk in the jungle, we send you out to a village, and all of a sudden you come up against this thing with this ugly-looking face and this other ugly-looking teeth, and it's got a big old gigantic mask. The mask is all fake, but the teeth are real. Filed fresh this morning. They lusting for something different than what people lust for in the Western world. They think your elbow will be good in a soup, soup bone. Strange when people look at you like that. I want you to experience that sometime, if there's any left, by the time we're done. Folks said, I know the cannibal's still in. I was with the preacher in Australia, in the back, outback of Australia. The Lord allowed us to go into the Pitanjaras, which is completely isolated by Australia from anthropologists and all the rest of those folks, trying to keep the Christians out of there. Uh, so the Aborigines can go on with their demon worship. The Lord allowed us to go in the pits and jars. It's where Ayers Rock, 
Well, then there's a huge, as it were, reservation. It's called the Pitsanjaras. People came from all, just came from thousands of kilometers. One of the preachers was a cannibal. He was still a cannibal in the mid-70s, for God's sake. In Australia, you think of Estonia, that doesn't compute, does it? In, in the Red Desert of Australia. It's true. There's a lot of witchcraft, a lot of dem, de, demonic things going on around this world right now. A lot of demonic things going on in this city. A lot of hateful, ugly things that God has given us the authority to overthrow, to stop. It's true. Because he has all power and authority in heaven. And everybody believes he's got power and authority in heaven, but also in earth. That's right. So whatever you bind on earth, I bind it. And I'll bind it in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. So just go in my name. Preach. Go cast out devils. That's how to preach. Go cast out devils. All authority is good to me. Go cast out every devil you find. You had to cast it out. Now I'm going to try to read this verse of scripture. If I can find Acts, I'm just can't. I'm having a hard time. Acts chapter 4. And I just want you to look at this verse of scripture here. Peter uh, has gotten himself in trouble again. Miracles, signs, wonders get you in trouble. And uh, so they got, they, got, they got a public scourging, a public whipping. And the one thing that they took note of in verse 13 is they saw the, the boldness of Peter and John. And then they saw a unique kind of boldness. A hookup with God boldness, authority boldness, to speak not as a scribe or as a Pharisee, but to speak like Jesus, because, and that's how they recognize, oh, these guys have been with Jesus. Look at that boldness. Now, after they've been beaten and threatened, we see when we come to verse 29 of the same chapter. We see one of the tactics of Satan is constantly threatening, threatening people do not speak in that name. Adam, wave at us. Oh, there's Adam. So Adam walks up to, Adam's got this kind of, you know, unique way, just walking up to people, just casually saying, has anybody ever told you about the, the Lord Jesus Christ, about the gospel of Jesus? Has anybody ever told you about his love for you kind of thing, you know? So he walks up to the guy and he says to the, to the older man, he says, excuse me, sir, I don't want to interrupt you. Do you just have a moment so I can ask you a question? Oh yes, young man. What 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 do you what do you what do you want? I want to know if you anybody's told you about Jesus. And the guy literally said, "I hate you." <laughs> he went from being nicey to extremely bad. I hate you. <laughs> well, everywhere we go, the prince of the power of the air is saying, "Don't speak in that name. Say any name you want to say. Just don't say Jesus. Don't say Jesus Christ." Just say God. You can say God all you want. God? Many gods. Huh? Hinduism. 33 million gods for Hindus. If a Hindu sin, there's no way to get his sin is cleansed. You know what he's got to do? 54,000 life cycles as a bug or an animal. Bugs, good. Life cycle bugs, quick. Some animals, huh? You don't want to be a sturgeon, right? Them trout live for a long time. Huh? Are you listening to me? There's lots of gods, lots of ideas, lots of problems. We have the answers for everyone. That's why Hindus easy to get Hindus saved. If you just simply know that, it's easy to get Hindus saved. Just tell them, hey, I have a way for your sins to be cleansed from right now. No more 54,000 life cycles as a bug. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because there's no guru on the planet who can answer that one question. If I've sinned, what can I do to not have that sin counted to me? No one, no guru. No holy man. But this man, Christ Jesus, man, you, we had the answer for them. But here, you see the satanic power of darkness doing what it always does doing to you what it does to you on a daily basis what it's doing right now in the classroom in the school room in the workplace when I worked for company Eli Lilly pharmaceutical company 
I used to wear this shirt. And it was white t-shirt in big red letters. Jesus. Huh? And on the back says, saves. Because you get, when you want to put in big letters, somebody said to me, are you allowed to wear this shirt to work? I said, most certainly. I've got, to, I've got permission. <laughs> I have permission. I got it from the highest seat of authority. I got permission to pray in Jesus' name, to speak in Jesus' name. Yeah, I'd set up scriptures all over my office area and all over my research area, my lab bench area. They said, hey, you know, so all the execs of, of Eli Lilly are going to come in. They're going to make you take that down. You should take it down ahead of time so you don't get in trouble. You know, you can mess with your emotions. I said, well, I want you to, I just, people get around. I said, I want you to understand something. See all of my scriptures? See all of them? Now look around there and you see all those different, you know, calendars and pictures everybody has. After the execs go through here, all those calendars and all those pictures are going to be gone. But my scriptures are going to be here. You know why? I received permission already to have these. I didn't tell them who I received permission from. I just let them know. I received permission. See, because of my boldness and my confidence, I could speak a realm of faith. I had authority. Because I wasn't uncertain. I wasn't being impacted by the opinion of men or the influence by my environment or my surroundings that are charged with the powers of darkness. I know who I am. That makes all the difference. We want you to know who you are. I'm telling this, not in a self-serving way, I'm telling this to you so you know who you are. Executives came through, Eli Lilly, from the main headquarters. All of their calendars, all their pictures went down. All my scriptures remain. What should it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? I had them big letters. Everybody could walk by that and see that. Nobody messed with me. Huh? Many, many Jews. Nobody messed with me. Jesus Christ, the Savior yesterday, today, the Savior of the world. Nobody messed with me. Why? I had permission. I'll ask you, do you have permission? Because if you don't have permission, you're subjugated to whatever the environment dictates. Look at Peter and John. They got beat, and they said, this is the authorities. This is the authorities. This is the rulers. These are the, these are the, this is the law of the land. Spiritual law. It's a theocracy. Speak no more in this name. They had permission. You judge. Should we obey you or obey God? I've got permission. I've already been good. I've got a commission. I've got permission. So here they go to the house. Man, look, they're shaking up. You never get beat, threatened. Now that you know, you're going to get killed if you don't watch out. I was in an Os I was in o Osaka. After I left Tokyo, I went to Osaka. And they rented a pretty big building there in Osaka. And my goodness, power of God fell one night in that place. And then they, they had something else going on, so they had to shut the meeting short. And I wasn't done. I wasn't half done. And I was so, I had the anointing of God on me that I walked down in the streets and I just started telling people about Jesus. One lay hands on different folks out there in the streets. And people said, oh, 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 you can't do that. I'm like, ah, 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 yes, I can. <laughs> no, we get in, we're going to get in trouble. Who, by who? <laughs> Who's going to come get us? <laughs> well, we don't know, but we're going to get in trouble. And that's about the size of it. I mean, they knew they had a concept. We're going to get in trouble. We're going to get in trouble. You're going to get in trouble. That's what goes on with you. We're going to get in trouble. Shh. You're going to get in trouble. God's talking to you. God, the Holy Ghost is talking to you. Miss Amy, <laughs> flowing on all nine gifts of the Spirit. God is talking to you. See, we're not, I told him, we're not going to get in trouble. It's a free society. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's an unwritten law. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'm not written law. Oh, yeah, you can't walk out to people on the street. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, no one wants to hear. I said to a, I said to a guy who was driving, he was telling me all this story. He was telling me the story. And I said, you see that woman right there? We were driving down the road. He said, you see that woman right there? If you hop out right now and you tell her about Jesus, she'll come into the kingdom because I perceive that she's ready to receive Jesus Christ. She's hungry. How many suicides go on in Japan? How much depression there? People don't ever come out of their houses. They're, cut, they're gripped by fear and terror. Huge numbers. Huge numbers. Oh, no, I can't do that. Was, you know, the first kind of response was, oh, wherever he... How do you know? I said, I know by the Spirit the Lord just showed me the woman. I said, I can't speak Japanese. You speak Japanese. Go tell her. Oh, we can't do that. Why? Because the prince of power, principality and powers, the wickedness says no. Somebody's going to have to get stirred up for this righteous cause. Somebody's going to have to bleed the king of heaven. Huh? Somebody's going to have to rise up and become a valiant person. Let me show you how it happens. Here's what you do. Verse 23, you ready? 29, you ready? Here's what you do. And now, Lord, behold their threatens, threatenings. Here's what they did. They went to a prayer meeting. They got into a prayer meeting. They start crying out, crying out to God in this prayer meeting. They get to this point. Now, Father, now, Lord, grant unto your servants boldness. Grant unto your servants. Now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Grant unto your servants that we may have boldness. Speak your word. And this kind of results you want in your prayer meeting. Are you with me? It's kind of results you want. Pray to the place that's shaken. Don't make it an allegory. Don't make it some, you know, simile. Don't make it, you know, some hyperbole. Don't make it some other thing. Make it the reality of what it is. It's the results God wants to give you. They prayed until the place was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, then they went and spoke the word boldly. Hallelujah. Praise God. The intimidation line, sickness can't take hold of me. I'm filled with the boldness of the Holy Ghost. I know who I'm in. I am. I'm in charge. It has to obey me. It has to leave my body. It can't touch me. Hmm? I know when I ask the Father something, it's going to happen. Because I know I'm confident. Let me just read. I was going to close here and just start praying for people. I just want to, let me read one other verse of Scripture to you. I believe it'd be, you find Ephesians chapter 3, um, verse 12. When you get there, can somebody, I couldn't find it. I couldn't see right now. I don't have the skill set to find that in the Bible right now. I have another skill set at work. I just want to open the Bible so that everybody at YouTube realizes this is in the Bible. So I'm just going to I'm going to just read it like it's written here in King James. So nobody can mistake it from my own words. Now I'll read verse 11 according to the eternal purpose which he has purposed us in Christ Jesus our Lord by whom we have boldness and access through confidence by the faith of him. Look, our assurance, our confidence, our boldness. As far as I'm concerned, I don't count nine fruits of the Spirit. I count 24, verse, 24 fruits of the Spirit in the Bible. Two of those are confidence and boldness. Assurance is involved as well. It's something that is given to us by the Holy Ghost to where we are certain that when we speak, it's going to happen. Huh? I was... Talking one night, one day in a meeting, and I told someone this morning, I was just reminded of this morning when I was talking to someone, I told someone I had a broken tooth. It wasn't a broken tooth, it was a tooth that was in great pain. Somebody told me that it was 
a, a, a dentist had told me, well, it, it probably needs a root canal. And I was just standing there preaching as in pain. I guess I've spoken too many things against people to not have decayed teeth. But you know what? It, it's better to get it than now than never, right? And then keep my tongue from even my lips to speak no guile. Uh, I depart from evil and pursue peace. I'm, I'm, I'm obeying the laws of the spirit of life. The laws of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus are being taught to us by the Holy Spirit. Okay? But at any rate, but at any rate I said, well, you know I've got pain in my tooth right now because I was just communicating some things. I was ministering on the manifestation of the spirit. And I said, well, really all that has to happen right now is the Lord dropping me a gift of faith and, I'm, and I'll immediately with that gift of faith I'll be able to speak and the pain will go and the tooth will be healed. When I said it, the gift of faith came. With that gift of faith, I spoke to my tooth, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. And pain was gone. The tooth was healed. Now listen, we just try to do things just because we think it's supposed to be done. No, 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 no. We just say, we're just going to jump into this thing headlong. No, 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 no. The disciples knew what they were going to do. Is it right for us to obey men or God? We know what they knew what they were going to do. The bottom line of it is they knew their dependency upon the Holy Ghost to function in that authority that would only be there through boldness and confidence, which was only going to come to them by the supply of the Holy Ghost. That faith, I mean, you know what? 90, I'm going to say 99% of faith is boldness and confidence. Just give me the liberty of saying this. 90% of it's confidence and 9% of it's boldness. And, you know, I'm just saying that loosely. What are you confident about tonight? Father, we thank you for this boldness and this confidence that you've given to us that no matter what situations beset, try to beset us or try to stand to prevent us for doing the things that you've commissioned us to do. They will not be able to influence or stop this wonderful work of grace which you supplied. Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, the fire of God begins to burn in your life like never before. Now in the name of Jesus, right now in Jesus' name, Right now, na la la monse beke dati beta. Right now, na manjele kala monse barman me mele kilat boshibaya. Right now, na mangele kasharro mangati yare debete. Right now, in Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Balavati freva dais. Zazu zadaini. Zadore mangate. Right now, in Jesus' name. Right now. <laughs> right now, all that you have need of, provided. Everything that, that concerns life and godliness is yours. You. Every good and perfect gift. Receive right now. 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 A miracle. Receive right now. This divine work of grace, receive right now. Receive right now. Take these things of God, they're yours. It's a grace that's been given. Receive right now. Divine power to run a race. Receive right now. Divine power to do these works. Receive right now. These things that God has given. Receive right now. In Jesus' name. Power from on high. Hallelujah.